So welcome to the trap 2 of our series of Algebra GMAT traps. Now we have also been taught from our early days if we have two variables we need two equations. If we have one variable we need one equation. But is that always true in GMAT? Absolutely again for a surprising again not. How? Let us see two questions and we will understand it better. So, so here are the two questions which we are going to discuss one after one and this one we have two variables and one equation but we have given an extra information a and b are positive integers. Here we have three variables and if I include these both then I have three equations but let's see is one of them sufficient or not. So let's go ahead and we'll start with this one. This totally seems impossible. It seems like two variables, one equation, how to solve it. But guys, when GMAT gives you things like this and we are positive integers, there is an extra GMAT edge. How? Let's go ahead and see this. I'll definitely take this over here, keep variables together and the number together. So what I'll have is a to the power 6 minus b square equals to 126. If I write this down as a cube square minus b square equals to 127 and apply a square minus b square, and a square plus b square will come down to this point. Now, I'm stuck. What to do? The point is this a comma b are positive integers. Do you notice this number? This is a prime number which can only be formed in just one way, and that's 1 into 127. Now, you may argue why this is not 1. Of course, a cube minus b is going to be smaller than a cube plus b. Given that both are positive. So keep all these little little things in your mind, it's gonna help you a lot. And now I have two equations in just one equation. A q minus b is equal to 1 and a q plus b is equal to 127. Now you can clearly easily solve it. If you add it up, you get 2 a q equals to 128, a q equals to 64, and hence a is equal to 4. And you can go ahead and find out b as well putting a4 over here. So I think it's quite clear that sometimes even one equation is sufficient to give you the values of a and b. He can hide two equations in just one equation. So be careful if you have anything given to you like this a and b positive integers. This will definitely have a role to play. I hope this is clear. Let's move to the second one. Now this is just the bullet of this. We have multiple variables and let's see whether just one equation is able to solve variables of 2 or 3 or not. Let's go ahead. So now, he's asking me z. Now you might say, sir, we need x and y, then only we'll be able to go to z. Not exactly. Let's just rewrite this statement, the question statement. And that's the perfect way of doing a data sufficiency question. Rewrite the question statement. So let's bring the other things on one side and z on one side. I come down to z equals to 2x minus 3, 1. Now, I don't need x and y to give the value of z. Even 2x minus 3y value can help me find out z. Now, let's go to the option statements. First says 2x minus 5 equals to 3y. This will give me 2x minus 3y is equals to 5. And I can find out that means z, which is equals to nothing but 5. But I cannot have guessed that if I won't have written this in this format. And this is the simplest of them all. He will include a lot of fractions and will try to confuse you. We will see in later videos. But remember, always convert this into the basic statement. Chahiye kya tha? Z. Convert this into such a form that Z is all alone. Now this becomes sufficient clearly. So now we might have fallen in the basic trap. Now let's go to the second statement. It gives us 3x minus 11 equals to 2z or z equals to 3x minus 11 upon 2. Now, of course, I cannot find it out because here z is in the form of x, here z is in the form of 2x minus 3y. So, so it is impossible for me to find out z. I can find out the relation between x and y. How? I can just simply put this over here in terms of z and I will get the equation in the form of x and y. But of course, I cannot find out the value of x, y, or z. This will become insufficient, but a is sufficient. So the idea behind this video was to tell you that from now on, two variables, two equations, I don't know, I will check. One variable, two equations, I'll still check. Two variables, one equation, 
maybe the answer can be there. You have to work with all the things. Thank you and hope you are enjoying the series. We will be back with the third basic trap of GMAT. Right now we are just talking about the linear equations trap, but the generalized law we will be focusing on exponents and inequalities and modulus and everything. So stay tuned and subscribe us. We can also give you details over here. Just mark a number so that in the future whatever video uploads will send you a proper message and you can never miss a video.